Hi. Well, that is the smallest conference we ever did. <laughs> and that's on, on purpose. Uh, notice there's no rock music as I walk on stage. <laughs> and I, I need a notepad because I wrote down things that I, I want to not forget. So it's very different from DockerCon. Uh, I'm just curious who here was at DockerCon, at one DockerCon, any DockerCon? OK, I guess pretty much almost everyone. So I hope you'll notice the difference. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to talk for a very long time. I don't really have a real talk. I just wanted to, I guess, talk to you for, <laughs> for a minute um, and welcome you. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to welcome all of you here. This is an experimental event for us. We've never done this before. Uh, and, and that means a few things. It means that uh, we're going to need your help to make it the best possible event. And uh, the most important aspect of this event, well, there's two aspects. The first is that it's small on purpose, because we want, by the end of these two days, everybody to have spoken to everybody. That's the goal. So um, we need your help in that. If you, at any point, see someone that you haven't spoken to. So actually, can I ask you to all look to your left? Uh, well, not at the same time. That doesn't work. <laughs> That was really fun to watch, though. <laughs> OK, well, you get the idea. I'm really bad at this. But uh, <laughs> just you know, talk to each other. <laughs> There's a lot of really, uh, really talented and experienced and interesting people in this room. Um, and it's really actually, I learned a lot just in the, the 30 minutes waiting uh, for this to start. So, so please do the same. So that's the first thing. It's small so that we can all talk to each other. And um, the, the second thing is that it's, well, it's not as tightly structured as our usual events. So since almost, almost all of you have attended DockerCon, you know that <laughs> we're lucky for a company of 250 people to have a conference that is basically as the same quality level or better than conferences run by huge companies, right? We just ha it's just an amazing event. And, and by the way, some of the people in this room who uh, organize DockerCon, so can, can Boom Team just stand up for a second? And the organizers in general, can, can we applaud? Because <laughs> <laughs> so believe me, in terms of logistics, <laughs> so I would, they just told me earlier, we could do this in our sleep. <laughs> Because DockerCon is like 50 of these in terms of, of size and complication. Uh, but we wanted to do um, a summit like this because it's important, to, it's important for us to counterbalance these huge, super organized mega productions with something m of more human scale where uh, the participants can actually define what it's going to be. So that's the other point. It's less structured, which means that we're also going to need your help in uh, defining the event. So, quick overview, it's a two-day event. Today is all talks, um, high-quality technical talks. This is a technical event for people who build stuff. So, there's no discussion of business model. There's no discussion of how my product is awesome and you can buy it. Uh, it's all about the code and how to make it work better, how to learn from each other about how to write better code. That's really all it is. Tomorrow, there is a more of a birds of feather session or format. And so we have a, a general structure, a blueprint. But my request to you is, if you see any opportunity to hijack and change the structure and suggest changes and create mini events within the event that were not planned, please do so. Uh, that's kind of the goal. So we're you know, we want to define this event together. We're hoping to do more of these. And um, let me tell you about the history of, of this summit. Last year, there was an event called DockerCon EU. Actually, who was there at, at DockerCon EU in Barcelona? OK. So DockerCon EU is unusual because it's very unusual for tech companies of our size or a lot of tech companies based in the US 
to throw a major event in Europe. And we had a lot of really positive feedback from DockerCon EU. And I think the, the, the most frequent question we got in the last six months from the community is, when, are you, when is the next DockerCon EU? Are you not doing DockerCon EU next year? And so the answer is no, we're not doing DockerCon EU this year. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because we're a small company and two mega conferences a year for a company our, our size, as it turns out, is completely insane. <laughs> It's just a, a lot of work to just, last year we were perpetually in rush mode. Um, and so we, we need time to also spend on writing quality software. <laughs> um, so we did only one DockerCon this year, but we wanted to do something high quality and special in Europe. So we're doing this. And the idea is that because it's small and our amazing boom team can do it in their sleep, then we can, you know, once we figure out the model here together, this is the prototype, then we can do more on different topics in different parts of the world. So that's the, that's the trade-off. Um, there's another reason I'm really excited about this event. I promise I'm not gonna talk for hours. <laughs> um, when we started Docker, we, we were, so we were a company called .cloud and then we worked on this side project and then we started showing it to people. So the way Docker started was not in a mega launch and a big, a big uh, there was no DockerCon when Docker started. Uh, there was just hanging out at the office of some of our friends and then showing us something we were working on, like, hey, what do you think? And they'd say, oh, that's cool. And then they'd, we'd come back later and, and show that we fixed some bugs. And then after a while, um, there were too many different people to just go visit one by one. And so we said, hey, do you guys want to come to our office and we'll just show you the latest version? And so um, our, fir we, the, our first Docker hack day was, I think, eight people at the dot .cloud office with a, you know, a screen that was, I guess, 100 times smaller than this and showing the latest version. And then we started doing it every week. And we went from eight to 20 to 50 to 100 but it was all hacking, right? It was showing cool hacks, um, talking about the best way to improve Docker, pure technical, and then eventually the community grew so large that we started going from hack day to meetups to conferences, right? And then that's a much broader audience, right? There's a lot of people using Docker who are less technical, less advanced, um, there's there's business people at DockerCon, and that's good, because if Docker doesn't solve business problems, then at some point, there's, there's no one paying the bills to keep writing the code, right? But I, I have to say, I kind of, I had kind of missed the opportunity to have something to get back to the roots of that hack day, and I think this is it. So this reminds me of the original, a few people get together at the .cloud office and just show each other some code. So anyway, uh, that's, that's the format, and I have to make sure I didn't forget anything important. Oh yeah, what's the topic of the conference? <laughs> so this, this summit is about plumbing, and I'll do the, sh I'll, the short explanation because I know a lot of you are familiar with the concept, but um, for those of you who were at, at LinuxCon earlier this week, and I, last time I make you raise your hand, I promise, but who was at LinuxCon? The, this week? Okay, so about half. Um, so we gave a lot of different ta talks on Docker, um, but in, in the keynote, we talked about the difference between the downstream products and the upstream plumbing, and that's a really important topic for us at Docker, and it's a really timely topic because there's a lot of discussion, sometimes arguments over uh, topics like how open is Docker, how much can I uh, modularize Docker? How much can I include Docker into my own product? Um, how much of Docker do I want to use versus turn off? Right? I'm sure you're familiar with all of that. I'm sure most of you have seen me shouting on Twitter about that at some point. Uh, but that's an important topic because it, it, it points to the question of what is Docker? Is Docker an upstream component? like the Linux kernel that you use to build your own product, or is it a downstream product that you use directly? 
like, I guess, Red Hat Linux in that metaphor, um, or Ubuntu, or any, anyway. Uh, <laughs> And so that, that's the question that, that we've been trying to answer for a while, and the, the answer, honestly, has been both. There is a big upstream community in Docker, and there's a huge downstream community of people using Docker as a product. And I think the, um, all the arguments and um, questions <clears throat> and confusion sometimes on the role of Docker and how open in Docker has to do with that dual identity. It's both upstream and downstream. And recently we've, we've decided that we want to clarify what is upstream, what is downstream, so that different people with different interests can choose. So that if you're interested in the upstream components of Docker, you're not forced to use the entire downstream Docker product. And vice versa, if you want to use Docker to solve your problems, you don't have to learn about 30 complicated components that, that you don't really want to mess with. So this summit is about the upstream plumbing. And the way we've approached this plumbing is by making Docker as modular as possible and spinning out the, the components so that they can be used independently of Docker. So if you think of libcontainer, which is I think the first component that we spun out uh, two years ago, and then a whole list, right? Containerd, Notary, libnetwork, swarmkit. Uh, we announced infrakit earlier this week, and we're gonna talk about that. Hyperkit, VPN kit, data kit, lots of kits. Um, <laughs> if I, I can't even list them all, there's a lot of them. Some of them are tiny and super specialized. Some of them are more generic, but there is, there is a lot. There's probably more than you think. I hear all the time, wow, I had no idea this existed in the, in the Docker upstream. So we want more people to, to learn about all this plumbing and participate in creating it. And honestly, we're trying to tell the community that we're serious about open source, upstream open source. We're serious about inviting anybody who wants to contribute to contribute and anybody who wants to reuse the components to reuse them. And it doesn't matter where you work. It doesn't matter if you like the Docker product or not. Um, if you're into content signing and tough, uh, then you should be, you should feel welcome to contribute to Notary, to fork Notary, to wrap it in any way you want. Same thing for Containerd, et cetera. So that's the topic of the, the summit, and um, I hope you enjoy it. So I think that was all I wanted to talk about, and I don't know what I'm doing on time. So tomorrow, one more thing. Tomorrow, I think at some point in that kind of half chaotic format, uh, I would love to do some sort of a conversation format, maybe a Q&A with the different maintainers and we can improvise something. Um, right now, I think maybe there's time for one or two questions, if you have any, or we'll just get started. Three questions. I was, I was told I'm allowed three questions. It's like uh, three wishes. <laughs> or, or it was perfectly clear and, okay, no. Mm. Uh, did everyone hear the question, or should I repeat it? Okay, so the question is, for higher level, for higher level products like Docker Data Center, and well, I promised I wouldn't talk about commercial products, but uh, it's the, the thing we sell for, to enterprises to manage their data center with Docker. Uh, will, will these products offer more modularity and choice of container runtimes, like LXC or Rocket? Um, I think actually that's a question about Docker itself, because really our commercial products are just, are just services, they're add-ons on top of the same Docker platform. So for a question like that, probably I would rephrase it as, will Docker offer pluggable, more pluggable container runtimes that allow plugging in LXC and, and Rocket? Um, I would say it's up to the maintainers. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that sounds useful. We, as you know, once upon a time, we actually did offer LXC as a pluggable backend. And then it got refactored out because it was a lot. It would, turned out it was a lot of complication in the code at the time. Um, I'm, 
I have no particular opinion on it. If users want it, we should add it. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's kind of not a very precise answer, but I would say there's no from a business, there's no no uh, business reason it for or against it. Uh, and by the way, doc, the Docker business in a nutshell make the open source project super successful, so that we have more people we can sell services to. Uh, so I'll take the opportunity to address one meme I hear all the time. So imaginary question. Hey, Solomon, is it true that sometimes uh, you refuse pull requests based on business interests at Docker? And the answer is no. Um, because if we were to make Docker less good than it could be for business reasons, that would be a really stupid business decision. Because if Docker is less good, then less people use it. And then we have less potential customers to sell services to. So anyway, thank you for your imaginary question, Solomon. <laughs> uh, were you going to ask a question, Brian? Or? Oh. So better answer than my answer. With OCI uh, runtime spec, it's from when, since 111, you said? 112. So you can, you can actually swap. So you can swap out run C, basically, right? OK. So if LXC were to implement the back end side of that spec, then we could swap them the same for Rocket. Yeah. Oh, I'm on time. Uh, OK, so I, I, I also want to talk to all of you. So come talk to me anytime. And I just really look forward to uh, all the other talks. So thanks a lot. And again, it's really great to, to have you. So I hope you, you have a good time. Thanks.